hello in this series of videos about the graph theory tool we're going to take a diversion from purely theoretical matters and look at a practical problem uh, Ben Lilborn in Australia sent me this route recently um, it is a recorded version of a race and it's eight laps of a circuit a little bit of a noisy data because it's recorded let's just focus in on one lap so we can see what's going on here okay so we can see here that the route there is in fact there's two parts this route there's an upper circuit here and then and we get to the end of the upper circuit and there's a very long downhill turn around at the bottom and then a hill climb back up the hill and turn sharp left onto the circuit uh, back to the start finish and do another lap and the elevation data from the gps recording device is uh, taken to be pretty accurate on the ascent but it's less accurate on the descent um, because i guess it's a barometric device and doesn't respond quickly enough uh, given the speed you're going down uh, so what we really want is for the elevation coming back up that hill to uh, be used as the master and for the descent to follow it and that tells us that we probably want to be using a uh, graph mode to do this to create an out and back track so what we'll do is we'll create a separate upper loop and a separate uh, descent we'll stitch them together using the graph tools and then we'll um, define the out and back track with some lane separation um, we're going to have a few complications here where the tracks are obviously very very close we'll need to tease those apart somehow I mean, the first thing to do is to create a decent graph um, so at the moment there's just a start and an end so we're going to need to make sure that we don't lose the start and the end node and we're going to need to make sure that we have somewhere to it round about here to attach the um, the uh, ascent and i'm going to be using the ascent which is the one that comes up on this side this is the ascent this is the descent so the attachment point is going to be here at the top of the ascent first then the start point um, there's a slight overlap there which is great but i want to make sure that there's a distinct node there so i'm going to kind of cheat properly because knowing how the graph tool works gives one the ability to do this so I'm going to drag apart the start and the finish and bring these endpoints together. And if I get that close enough, then when I... So if I do create to uh, convert to graph, I've got three nodes. One is the start, one is the finish, and one is the node in the middle. This is the one that I'm really interested in. So we'll see the purpose of that will become clear later. This is the ascent coming up, uh, and I'm going to I'd want to attach it about here. So again, I'm going to need to create another node here. I need to do this piece of work not in graph mode. So I'm going to select the top of the ascent. Uh, and roughly the start of the descent I'm going to delete that now I need to create an artificial node here so I need the map again for this and then when I do a convert to graph mode again I get a node there which is exactly what I wanted so I now have a node at my start and a node at the finish um, I'm going to save this as upper loop yep. I'm using a pen to stitch the ascent or the descent even on here uh, so I don't have that yet let's go back we've saved that let's go back to our that one um, and do the converse what we now have is the ascent but I'm going to be joining it at this end I'm going to be appending it under the loop track maker I have reverse so that is now going to go downhill as you can see by the coloring so that's uphill and that's downhill and 
I'm going to save that as a descent. Load the upper loop graph. Here we go, that's where we were. Into graph. Leave that first little section there to make sure we don't lose the start and finish nodes. Add in first lap and then come back and finish at the attachment point. Convert that from a graph and just to verify now that it does what we want. Starts there, goes around there, ends there, splitter and joiner, append the file, append the descent please. Now it's colliding with our route and we saw that <coughs> in the initial track. Now we need to do something about it. So let's let's create some space for that append to actually stitch on there. So let's undo the append, go into the map and I'm going to use lift and shift so I can make some fine adjustments to the actual location of the track. Um, based on where it's centered so you're going to need to do the again a bit of trial and error here it's gone the wrong way okay and i can rotate it so i've got a few options here i rotate it slowly let's try the append now and okay again it's controversial but i'm not going to try and spend all the time i need to get this exactly right um, I'm satisfied that they are not colliding. That's the important thing for me. Um, now, as we now have a track that goes down the loop and stops. Now we use graph theory again, and this is where it comes in really useful that we've got these nodes handy. So I am going to now completely redefine the loop. I'm going to begin at the start, drop a marker, move that marker forward. So that defines my first reversal in the route. I am then going to go down the hill. I'm then going to go back up the hill. I'm then going to come on to the rest of the circuit. And that's where I finish. I'm going to apply a moderate offset of about three meters to the left and there is my resultant track you see they're very close to colliding again here and it's a bit of a mess here um, but now I need to sort that out and I can use all the tools at my disposal so for instance uh, drop the marker there this is as we come around the track and we go on to the descent well we don't really need that to be anything other than probably quite straight so in this occasion um, straight and tall will work for me and then we have to do something when we come up the hill uh, let's just drop the marker here and see if we can do something nice with the classic bend smoother like that So you're now into conventional smoothing territory. You can do whatever you want to do the rest of the time. Uh, the important thing to note here is that our out and back section is completely sorted because we've used the graph. Um, these corresponding track points will have exactly the same elevation. Uh, maybe we want to do something at the bottom at the turnaround. You can see what we've done here is just put in a uh, hairpin turn. Uh, that might or might not be what you want. I can see on the map that there is actually a roundabout there So we're not very faithful to the roundabout. You could use drag on point here to literally follow the roundabout round uh, you could um, equally just some select some points here and use the nudge tool to nudge the road perhaps to a larger radius you could and use the bend smoother. Yeah, it's kind of up to you what you want to achieve. However, I think as a first pass done relatively quickly, 
uh, that's not too shabby. Well, our purpose here in this video is not to make it smooth. Our purpose was to demonstrate how you can <clears throat> use a combination of tools to try and remediate something that's frankly pretty bad. And here you can see that the elevations on the downward side exactly correspond track point by track point with the elevations on the other side of the road. Okay, I know that's a bit all over the place um, and there are still remain many issues, but I hope that gives you some ideas of how you could play with these tools in the future and perhaps make a better job than I did out of this one. Thank you.